Welcome in to Outkick the Show. I am your fearless leader, Clay Travis. I appreciate you spending your Tuesday with me. Go to Oddshark for all of your gambling and informational related needs. And, and boys and girls, if you need a mortgage, wherever you are in the country, if you are not getting a great rate and getting hooked up by the sponsor of the anonymous mailbag, thehomeloanexpert.com, you are wasting your life. Go there today, just in time for the holidays. I'm here to tell you right now, I know how difficult it can be. I once was poor myself. I know how difficult it can be to make the mortgage payments and take care of everybody with the travel, the presents, all of the other unnecessary expenses that are out there. I'm telling you right now, you need to go to the Home Loan Expert right now. Trust me. Go to the guys I trust to get the best possible rate, get hooked up anywhere in the country, thehomeloanexpert.com. If you tell them that Clay Travis sent you, then you will get a year's free supply of OutKick VIP, and you, my friends, will have an awful Merry Christmas. Oh, an awfully Merry Christmas. Not an awful Merry Christmas. An awfully Merry Christmas. All right, go there today. So much to get to in the world of SEC football coaching search. You guys know that I love the drama of a good coaching search. We've got several things I want to get to today. Six jobs potentially opening in the SEC. Six jobs potentially opening in the SEC. And Ric Flair, but this is the rundown. All the jobs that are potentially opening in the SEC. Ric Flair claims that he slept with 10,000 women. Do we buy it? Has everybody rode Space Mountain? Has your mom? Has your sister? Has your aunt? Maybe. Has your daughter? Have I? Maybe I've ridden Space Mountain. Who knows? Uh, And we'll talk about the highest paid TV hosts out there. So first of all, I think the SEC is a total total cluster right now. I'm going to give you my blood bank guarantee right now. I gave it to you last week. I'm giving it to you early this week too. There are three games that I absolutely love. I'm going to give you this parlay right now. I want you to all immediately go play it. All right? Play this gambling parlay right now. Three games I love. I love the over in Kentucky Vanderbilt. Three SEC games for you. The over in Kentucky Vanderbilt. I love the under in South Carolina, Florida. And I'm telling you right now, Mizzou is going to obliterate Tennessee. I don't know how many of you are paying attention to what's going on at Mizzou right now. They're going to finish 7-5. and I told you a couple weeks ago, I said, look at this schedule. With the way Drew Locke is playing, this team can score. And I'm not sure there are very many teams they're playing against that can score with them. So I said, take Mizzou. And I've won a lot of money on Mizzou the last couple of weeks. I told you last week, I said, they're going to obliterate Florida. And I told you a couple weeks ago, I said, they're going to beat Florida and they're going to beat Tennessee. And then, honestly, I think they're going to beat Vanderbilt and I think they're going to beat Arkansas. I think Mizzou's going to win. Is that six in a row? I think Mizzou's going to finish at seven and five and everybody's going to be saying, holy hell. And they're going to go from, my God, we're screwed, to, man, I hope Drew Locke doesn't decide to go pro. That's how good I think Drew Locke is playing right now. Uh, I Obviously, he is just on a different role. So, blood bank guarantee right now is Mizzou covering against Tennessee. Tennessee can't score over 20. Uh, Mizzou's going to score 40 on them. Uh, So, I'm telling you that right now. Blood bank guarantee... And on top of that, I love the under in Florida at South Carolina. And I love, absolutely love uh, as well, the over in Vanderbilt, Kentucky. That's a three-game SEC parlay. I've already bet it. I'm telling you guys out there, people say, oh, don't bet parlays. I think it makes it more fun to bet a parlay. And you can six times your money if you hit all three of those. Now, you also bet them all individually so that you're covered up there. And just play parlay with your fun money. Just play parlay with your fun money there. But I'm giving you that trio early this week. Numbers are just out. Go play it right now. Trust Santa Clay coming through for you in time for Christmas. All right, let's talk about these SEC jobs. Guys, I don't know what's going on at the University of Tennessee, but it is a total clusterfuck right now at Tennessee. John Curry, I don't know what he's doing, the athletic director there. It is an absolute mess. Butch Jones is out. They're going to get blown out by Mizzou. They're going to get beaten, I think, honestly, by Vanderbilt. And I think there's a good chance they get beaten, certainly, by LSU as well. I think Tennessee probably loses their last three. 
But I think there's a lot of incompetence there. Tennessee's going to open up. I'll talk to you about groomers and everything else starting soon. First, Tennessee's going to open up. Florida, we know, is open. All right, I think that Kevin Sumlin at Texas A&M, as much as I like him, is going to be out because I don't think he's going to win out. I don't think he's going to get to 8-4. and four. So I think Kevin Sumlin is going to be gone. I think that Brett Bielma has to be gone at Arkansas. I think that there is a very good chance uh, that, uh, that something happens at Auburn. I don't know what's going to happen at Auburn, but Auburn is a mess. They're getting a new athletic director. And th- just wait and see what happens. Auburn is, I think, a fascinating job right now. Ole Miss is obviously going to have a new coach too because Matt Luke is not going to come back. But I, I think that Auburn is kind of this linchpin job there because I want to I talk to the Auburn people here for a minute. Let's say that you'll lose close games to Georgia and to, um, and to obviously, Alabama. Respectable games, right? Those are games in Jordan-Hare. You feel like you should play well against them. Let's say that happens, okay? Let's say that happens. Do you really blame uh, anything on Malzahn except for the LSU game? The LSU game, Auburn should have won. They gave that game away. Jared Stidham was awful in the second half. But other than that, you lose by eight on the road at Clemson at night. You lose, let's say, competitively to Georgia, and let's say you lose competitively to Alabama. Why would you fire Gus Malzahn? I mean this honestly. I know everybody out there is always in favor of firing coaches, and I get it. Trust me. I totally get the frustration over losing all the time. But who are you going to get better than Gus Malzahn with 8-4? and four? Who are you going to get a better option than Gus Malzahn, especially with Jarrett Stidham coming back. I think Auburn would actually be set up to be pretty decent next year. And look, if they beat Georgia, certainly he's not going anywhere. That would chain, throw everything for, a, for a, a, a loop. So here's the other linchpin job. Let me talk about Tennessee for a second. I think Tennessee is going to try to get John Gruden still and is going to offer him a lot of money. And I'm not sure what John Gruden's going to do. I don't think anybody knows what Gruden is going to do. The groomers are out of control. Now, for those of you out there who don't know, John Gruden's son is enrolled at the University of Tennessee as a student. His wife's a former cheerleader. His in-laws all live in East Tennessee. If I were sketching out the reason why John Gruden would make sense, okay, the reason why John Gruden would make sense is this. He's 54 years old. At some point in time, most television announcers decide... I don't want to do this for the rest of my life. Now, certainly that has happened before. If John Gruden is going to turn into John Madden, then totally I get it. I get that he's, his legacy is going to be, I won a Super Bowl, and then I went into television, and I was very good at it, and I did it for years. Okay? I understand that argument. But most people want new challenges. And so for new challenges, what better way to go out if you're John Gruden than as a legend. I've talked about this before. College football makes coaches legends. Other programs in the NFL, like think about this for a minute. In the NFL, how many legendary coaches can you name? Even in the recent history. I'll give you Vince Lombardi. I'll give you Don Shula. I'll give you Tom Landry. Old school guy is an NFL coaching legend. New school NFL is all about the quarterback. You're only as good as the quarterback you have with the exception of Bill Belichick, who's a legend. Bill Walsh is a legend. John Madden, maybe, but only because he was in there. Like, you're getting to it, right? There are almost more legendary Alabama coaches than there are legendary NFL coaches. That's because college is where coaching legends are made. College is where you become legendary. It's where you become iconic if you are a coach. Pete Carroll is legendary in some way still at USC. At at the Seahawks? Eh. Think about John Gruden. Does Tampa Bay really consider John Gruden to be a legend? Compare how John Gruden would be viewed as a Super Bowl winner versus if he came to Tennessee and he won a national championship in the next five years. They would name part of the field after him at Tennessee if he won a national championship there. He's already won a Super Bowl in Tampa Bay, and most people won't even give him the best table at the Tampa Bay Hooters. That's what happens in the NFL, because everybody focuses on the quarterback. NFL is all about your quarterback. College is all about your coach. Now, so all these different jobs, what do we think happens? What do we think happens with all these different jobs? I'll tell you one. 
So Auburn is a linchpin situation because it's the kind of job that can throw everything into an uproar. If Gus Malzahn, I would argue, even if Gus Malzahn loses, that he should still come back next year. Now, some of you are frustrated. Some of you disagree with that. I understand that Auburn fans are frustrated because it's not just how you're doing. It's always how you're doing in relation to the other program in the state, which is Alabama. And Alabama, frankly, has never has been a dynasty like no other. Auburn's actually been pretty successful historically at the same time that Auburn has. Almost won two nas- of that Alabama has. Almost won two national championships. If they can defend against Jameis Winston in the final one and a half minutes of that game out in the Rose Bowl, they won with Cam and they would have won with Nick Marshall. So, what happens with Auburn? I think Gus is going to be back. But, I think if I were betting right now, I don't think John Gruden's going to go to Tennessee because I won't. I just I refuse to believe Gruden's going until I actually see him show up at the press conference. Now, I want it to happen with every fiber of my being just to see the internet explode if John Gruden takes the Tennessee job after all the groomers over the past several years. It would be amazing, okay? But I think the most likely hire at Tennessee right now is Dan Mullen. I think there's a decent chance that Dan Mullen goes to Tennessee. And if Dan Mullen goes to Tennessee, it would open up a sixth job in the SEC. So let's talk about who I think gets these jobs. I love the coaching carousel. I love everything surrounding the drama of coaching free agency. So I think Florida is going to hire Scott Frost. I would be surprised at this point if it's not Frost. Okay, I think that Scott Frost is going to go to Florida. I think that they will believe, Scott Strickland, the AD there, will believe that he has got the next Urban Meyer. That Scott Frost is going to go to Alabama, going to go to Florida. He's going to recruit well. His system is going to be revolutionary, and the Gators are going to score some points. Remember, head coaches matter when it comes to culture. Florida's culture is we're the fun and gun, baby. We score points. They would rather go nine and three and average forty-five points a game at Florida than go ten and two and average seventeen. That was the problem with Muschamp. And that, frankly, was the problem with McIlwain, who was brought in to be an offensive guy and never was able to take the offense to the next level. That's the truth, okay? So I think, in general, Scott Frost is going to be the higher there. I think for Tennessee, it's going to be Dan Mullen. All you Mississippi State people, people, I love this. No one ever believes that their coach is ever going to leave. Right now, there are tons of Mississippi State people probably blowing up the mentions. I'm not reading the comments saying, oh, Dan Mullen loves it here. His grandparents moved here. His kids go to a great private school. He's never lived anywhere better in the whole world than Starkville, Mississippi. He's told that to booster meetings forever. Guess what? Coaches lie. They always say whatever job they have is the best job they've ever had. They always have their dream job. Remember when Tommy Tuberville said the only way he was going to leave Oxford was in a pine box? And then he took the goddamn Auburn job. One of the greatest moves of all time. Tommy Tuberville told people in Oxford, the only way I'm ever going to leave Oxford is in a pine box. And then he took the Auburn job. He didn't even, he didn't even leave the division. He didn't even have the decency to leave the division. That's like breaking up with your wife and screwing the girl across the street. That's what that is. He's not even leaving the subdivision. Oh yeah, by the way, we're getting a divorce and I'm moving in with the hotter divorcee across the street who's got a bigger house than this one. Good luck with the alimony. That's basically what Tommy Tuberville said. One of the great all-time lines, all right? Um, and so, on top of that, you break down that job. I think, so, okay, let's take another step back here. So, I think that Mullen's going to go to Tennessee. Okay, you can all disagree and say, oh, he loves Oxford, he'd never leave, all those things. I think most likely hire for Tennessee is Dan Mullen. That's my bet, okay? Uh, what does Ole Miss do? Nobody talking that much about Ole Miss, but I love Ole Miss for this reason. First of all, I love Oxford. I think that Oxford is a hell of a place to live. It's a spectacular town. And while they are a total mess with potential probation coming, they've got a lot of money to pay because they didn't have to pay off Hugh Freeze. All that SEC network money is rolling in. So I'm actually really intrigued to see who jumps at the Ole Miss job. Because I think they'll pay somebody $5 million a year and give them five years guaranteed, which means you know you just signed a contract for $25 million. And it is always on some level about the money. I'll be honest to you guys. You pay me enough money, I'll do anything. I've said this before. I'm a straight man. If you paid me enough money, I would do gay porn. Not because I would enjoy it, but because everybody works for money on some level. I don't know what my porn number is, but I believe that every single male or female in this country, there is a dollar figure 
that you could pay that would make them do porn. All right? I don't know what that number is, but every single person in America, person you can't trust, person who lies and say they don't have a porn number. I'll be honest with you. My wife would be like, what? They, they're going to give you $20 million to do gay porn? You better do it. You better suck that dick. You better do it for the family. That's the truth. All right? So everybody has a porn number. So coaches do too. They'll go anywhere if you pay them enough money. That's the whole purpose of the dump truck theory. All right? So what does Ole Miss do? It's the ultimate test because I think they'll have to pay a lot of money given the fact that they have the probation. I think they will have to pay a ton to get somebody to roll in there and take over that program. Who's going to do it? It's a fascinating question. I think the most about the Ole Miss job, and I'm sitting around like trying to sketch out who makes sense for Ole Miss. Les Miles would kill for it. All right, I don't think Les is going to get a big time job. So I don't think Les Miles is going to get the LSU, the Ole Miss job. Uh, I think a lot of people are going to look at Les and say he's too old. They don't want somebody on the sideline who is that erratic. If you couldn't win consistently and dominate people with LSU talent, why are you going to come to Ole Miss and be able to do it? I think it's a good question. So I am totally fascinated to see what Ole Miss is able to pull because that to me is the ultimate test for what money will do. And I'm not sure what the answer is. It's a crazy idea for you. It's an absolutely crazy idea that you may think is insane. You gotta take my drink. What if Kevin Sumlin got the Ole Miss job? Some of you may be like, no, that's crazy. What's it? What? That to me is kind of an intriguing move. What if Ole Miss decided, you know what? We're looking around the league and we don't think we can do better than Kevin Sumlin. Just tossing it out there. The, the comments suddenly went, went dark. Everybody's in stunned silence. Just kind of intrigued by it. Here's another name that I'm intrigued by that I think you could probably get if you paid him enough money. Mike Leach. I think if you went out, if you are Ole Miss and you went out to, uh, to Washington State, you would say, look, Mike Leach, you have won at Washington State. You have won at Texas Tech. Those are absolute backwater coaching destinations. What if you came to Mississippi? A place that loves its eccentrics. A place that absolutely loves all of the zaniness. If you watch a Mike Leach press conference, that guy is an absolute riot. Tell me why Mike Leach in Oxford, right there by Roanoke, right there by William Faulkner, would not be a perfect fit in Oxford. They would love his eccentricities. He would love that little town. He would walk around. He could study all these different things. I could see him getting into Southern fiction and reading everything. I think he'd win at a pretty high level. I think that would be a hell of a, a, hell of a hire for the SEC and for Ole Miss. So that's my suggestion there. But about Arkansas? Arkansas, I'm going to tell you this. I would do this if I were Arkansas. I would go get Lane motherfucking Kiffin and I would have him bring Kendall Bryles with me back to Arkansas and I would roll the dice that Lane Kiffin could get it done at Arkansas. Let me explain why. When Arkansas hired Brett Bielema, my question in general about the decision to hire Bielema was, are you really going to bring in a guy who runs a pro-style offense and think that he is going to beat out Nick Saban and, at the time, Les Miles with inferior players, okay? Some level, you have to analyze your schematic advantage. It's like Moneyball. You sit down, you say, okay, at Nick Saban in Alabama, they're always going to have the best players. So how do you beat them? What I loved about Bobby Petrino at Arkansas was this. They figured out a scheme that works, and they found a reason to make people believe that Arkansas could be different. Now, Petrino didn't work because he hired his mistress and had a motorcycle accident. But the on-the-field product filled up the stadium and everybody loved Petrino in Arkansas. Why would you not go get a younger version of Bobby Petrino in Lane Kiffin? Go hire Lane Kiffin, bring Kendall Bryles with him to Arkansas, run the most exciting brand of offensive football in the entire conference, let Lane Kiffin go after Nick Saban. Let Lane Kiffin go after all these other coaches in the SEC West. I think Arkansas and Lane Kiffin is a perfect fit. Now, Lane also spent time in Fayetteville when he was a kid. His dad, uh, Monty, was a coach on the Arkansas staff. And so I think if I were Arkansas, if I were their athletic director, that's the hire that I would make. It's risky. 
but you need an exciting brand of football to bring all the Arkansas people back together again after the disaster that has been Brett Bielma. And Lane Kiffin in Fayetteville would get it done in terms of making it exciting. So I think Lane Kiffin to Arkansas would make a ton of sense. Okay, So here are my answers so far in general. At Tennessee, I think Dan Mullen's going to be there. At Florida, I think they're going to end up with Scott Frost. At Arkansas, I go Lane Kiffin. I don't know if they'd be willing to, but that's who I think they should go with. I think there's probably more likely they'll go after Matt Campbell, assuming Nebraska does or does not open up. But I think that's who I'd go after. At Ole Miss, I'd get Mike Leach. How about A&M? A&M, to me, to me now, the home run hire for A&M is Chip Kelly. I think you go get Chip Kelly. He recruited Texas pretty well. Remember LaMichael James, Johnny Manziel, before he uh, went to A&M, was committed. Had decent contacts in the state of, for Oregon, in the state of Texas. I think, I know it's an Adidas school. I know that he's a Nike guy. But I think if you're going to replace Kevin Sumlin, I don't think Kevin Sumlin should be replaced in general. Okay? I think Kevin Sumlin's done a pretty good job. I understand if he goes 7-5 and five this year, the trajectory is not positive and people are going to force him out. But if you're going to force out Kevin Sumlin, you need to go out there and get a home run hire. A guy who can change the trajectory of the state of Texas. Right now, Tom Herman is going to be recruiting well. You need to go get Chip Kelly. You need to surround him with a bunch of recruiters. And you need to say, Chip, go to town. Score some points, baby. I think that's the play. All right, those are my suggestions at all of those places. I also think Bobby Petrino could get some looks. We know Auburn has flirted with Bobby Petrino before. We know Florida has kind of intrigued, been intrigued by, uh, by him. Uh, though the only coach I can see inside the SEC other than Dan Mullen, I think Sumlin could get hired somewhere else. I think Sumlin has done well enough that somebody else could make the decision, you know what, we want Kevin Sumlin. For instance, UCLA, if Moore is out, I can see UCLA being like, you know what, we want Kevin Sumlin. So all those things are decisions that I think could be at play here. I absolutely love everything surrounding this topic. All right, Malzahn too. I don't think Malzahn should get fired. I really don't. I mean, I, Auburn people, I understand you're upset about uh, about Malzahn, but barring look Georgia coming into town and beating you 45 to three, and then Alabama also beating you 45 to three, I think the only game you could be upset about if you're Auburn this year is LSU. Auburn should have won that game. Otherwise, you might lose to three of the four playoff teams. It's possible that Clemson, Alabama, and Georgia are three of the four playoff teams. Can you really be upset? at Gus Malzahn because he loses to three of the four playoff games? I, I, I don't think so. Again, eight and four, you fire Malzahn. I, I would be fine with Malzahn, frankly, in Knoxville. I think that I would be very comfortable with Gus Malzahn in Knoxville because I think he's just a good quarterback away from winning at a pretty high level. And if he got to coach in the SEC East, I feel like he would do pretty well. Remember, this guy almost won a national championship. And, frankly, should probably give him credit for the national championship that Auburn won in 2010. Uh, biggest name willing to take the Ole Miss job? That's a great question. Oh, man, I love this kind of, these kind of questions. Biggest name that you could get at Ole Miss? Just based on money, let's say you're going to pay $5 million a year and guarantee like five years no matter what because the first couple of years with probation are going to be a mess. Biggest possible name. Les Miles is not the biggest possible names, uh, biggest possible name to me because I think they could get Les Miles. That's a great question. I, hadn't, I haven't had that question asked. Um, for $5 million a year, who could you get that would come to Ole Miss that would shock people? Um, God, I, I don't know. That, that, is a, that, is a, that is a great question. I, I, I don't know that you could do, and anyone is the wrong answer. $5 million a year. I mean, I think a lot of people could afford $5 million. Um, yeah, that's a great question. I, I, a lot of questions about Jimbo leaving FSU. I don't know what's going on with Jimbo Fisher at FSU. I don't think you could get him to... I, I don't think he would go to Ole Miss. Um, Bob Stoops, I don't think, would come back for $5 million. Uh, it's a good question. It, could you get Justin... Oh, this is a good question. Justin Fuente? Could you get Justin Fuente from Virginia Tech to come to Ole Miss for $5 million a year guaranteed, given the fact that he had coached in Memphis for a while? Well, for a while. By the way, I think there's a good chance, honestly, that Arkansas hires Mike Norvell. As opposed to Lane Kiffin, I said I would I would hire him. Could you get Justin Fuente 
to come to uh, to come to Ole Miss for five million dollars a year. I think it'd be a challenge, but maybe. Uh, could you get? Here's an interesting question. Nobody talks about him. Could you get Dana Holgerson? Would Dana Holgerson from West Virginia? Uh, nobody's talked about him in a large extent. He plays an exciting brand of football. West Virginia, obviously, a little bit off the recruiting radar. Could you get a guy like uh, Dana Holgerson to come to Ole Miss to try to win um, for $5 million a year? Yeah, I think you could. Yeah, and the other thing is, if you're not going to go Chip Kelly at A&M, I gave you the guys that I would hire. I think that probably the most likely hire there is Chad Morris from SMU. Uh, Mike Gundy. Would Mike Gundy leave Oklahoma State? It seems like things are back in a good shape with T. Boone Pickens at Tennessee. Here's my thing in general. This has been my argument for years, and you guys probably have heard a version of this. But I don't understand why, and you're talking about Mike Gundy, like Tennessee flirted with Mike Gundy and Charlie Strong. And by the way, Charlie Strong's not an awful hire. Could I see Charlie Strong going to Ole Miss for a guaranteed five-year deal, uh, dealing with the probation, but being in Mississippi and going and recruiting? Yeah, I could see that hire. I could see Charlie Strong going to Ole Miss. I could see Charlie Strong to Arkansas, perhaps. Um, I don't think those would be bad hires. Uh, back in the SEC where he's had some pretty good success. I could see those guys as both being in play too. Remember, Tennessee tried to hire Charlie Strong and they tried to hire uh, Mike Gundy. And my thing with both of those hires in general was this. And this, I would say, is a lesson for you too. If you love something, don't allow a small amount of money, relatively speaking, to keep you from getting what you love. To wit, let me explain. If you thought that Charlie Strong was worth $3.5 million a year, but he thought that he was worth $4.5 million a year, the difference of paying him an extra million dollars a year is minimal in the grand scheme of things if he wins. So if you're convinced that you've got the right guy, don't allow yourself to be priced out of the market by a million dollars. I've seen Tennessee do this a bunch. They went and talked to Will Muschamp. Will Muschamp wanted too much money, so they took Derek Dooley. That's fine. I like Derek Dooley. He's a friend of mine. But if you loved Will Muschamp and he wanted a million and a half dollars more than you were willing to pay, why not pay the extra million and a half dollars? I just saw where Tennessee's got a $329 million stadium renovation that they're raising money for. The money that you don't pay on the front end, you end up paying on the back end in buyouts. So why would you think you're saving money and say, oh, we got our coach for $3.6 million and we didn't overpay? To me, you cannot overpay for a coach just like you can't overdraft for a quarterback. Remember back in the day, uh, if you traded everything, let's say, for instance, if Tennessee, the, uh, the, the Titans, when Peyton Manning was about to come out, if they had given up every draft pick for two years to get the number one pick and they got Peyton Manning, and he had turned into Peyton Manning. The value to the Tennessee Titans of having Peyton Manning would have far exceeded the loss that they took over the two years worth of picks they would have given up. If you find the right guy, there is not any case where paying too much money is a problem. So if you like one guy for $5 million, I don't understand how you like another guy for $3.6 million. Pay the guy $5 million. You'll make it up on the back end because the university will grow. There will be donors who come in and they want to build these facilities. The thing that drives me crazy, and I've talked about this argument, coaches sell programs. Facilities do not sell programs. When I met Butch Jones, and he had taken me around at Tennessee, I said, man, you know, I don't like this guy, Butch Jones. He seems like a used car salesman. He doesn't seem like a guy who can, I'm convinced is going to do a great job as a CEO. And I remember having that moment, and I've told this story, we're standing right there by the bench press. Tennessee's got a brand new workout facility. And Butch Jones wants to make an awesome, huge deal about the goddamn smoothie bar that they just put in beside the weight bench. And he's going on and on about how, look, you can rip out a bunch of Macs, and then you walk right over here, and you can get a kale smoothie. And I remember saying right then and there, don't, in my head, don't juice bar me, bro. You are not going to convince me. It might work on dumbasses. You might be able to convince some people that you're going to beat Alabama because there's a new smoothie bar in the weight room. But the smoothie bar ain't beating Nick Saban. All right? Facilities are not Tennessee's issue. Tennessee's issue is their coaching staff is not as good at getting good players in and they're not as good at getting those players to develop as Alabama's coaching staff is. And that ain't because Alabama's got a waterfall in the bathroom. 
All right. The waterfall in the bathroom happens because of the good coaching, not the players coming because of the waterfall in the bathroom. And I think a lot of ADs don't understand that. Facilities follow success. Success does not follow facilities. This should be an easy thing to understand. This should be a really easy thing to understand. I want to repeat it because to me, there are a lot of ADs that end up watching this show or listening to it. And I think they've got it backwards. They think that success follows facilities. The reality is facilities follow success. If you build it, they don't come. If you win, you can build it. Okay? Every school in the SEC has good facilities. The difference between winning and losing is not air-conditioned you know, pads or air-conditioned helmet holders. It's the guy who's the CEO of your program. And so I think you need to go out and win. Great point. Spurrier had crappy facilities at UF and killed everybody. Do you know why? Fun and gun, baby. He showed up and he was better at his job than everybody else. And he had a systemic advantage. And it made sense. All right. I want to hit you with several other things here. Um, Ric Flair slept with 10,000 women. I've been going on for so long about the jobs. I'm not even going to talk about that. I want to hit you with these. These uh, factoids as we go out. Do you know that Dr. fucking Phil made $79 million last year? Dr. Phil. Did you know that Ellen made $77 million? Did you know that Ryan Seacrest made $58 million? Did you know Dr. Judy made $47 million on Judge Judy last year? Steve Harvey made $42.5 million. And Sean Hannity made $36 million last year. Okay? I'm here to tell you this right now. I could do Judge Judy's job better than her job. I could do fucking a lot of these jobs. I don't know how I'm going to make it, but if Judge Judy can make $47 million a year, by God, at some point, I'm making $47 million a year too. DBAP, go buy your OutKick shirts. I appreciate all of you. Thanks for spending your Tuesday afternoon with me. Be live tomorrow, early morning, 6 to 9 a.m. Eastern. Get up, Sirius XM 218, XM Channel 202. Don't be a pussy. And remember, don't get juice barred, bro. I love all of you. Thanks for the time that you're spending with me. Lots of fun to talk about, discuss. Keep me updated on all the latest rumors and all the coaching searches. I love it. It is exhilarating. Blood Bank Guarantee. Remember, I love this trio. The under on Florida at South Carolina. The over on Kentucky at Vandy. And Mizzou to cover minus 11 now versus the Vols. Kisses to all of you. I'm Clay Travis. This has been Outkick the Show. Go get hooked up at oddshark.com and go to the Home Loan Expert right now and get a great mortgage. I love all of you. I'll see you. Bye.